That, Mr. Edwards, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chairman Neugebauer, uh, Ranking Member Capuano, and members of the subcommittee, we appreciate the opportunity to testify on behalf of the FDIC on our agency's structured transaction program. A structured transaction is only one of the asset disposition strategies the FDIC employs to fulfill our statutory duty to maximize the net present value return from the disposition of assets of failed institutions and to minimize the amount of loss realized in the resolution of those institutions. This type of transaction has been used for approximately 4% of the $670 billion in assets that the FDIC inherited from bank closures since January 2008. Most of the time, we're able to achieve the least costly resolution by transferring the failed bank's uh, deposits, assets, and certain liabilities immediately after the bank closing to an acquiring bank. Unfortunately, failing banks with little franchise value and poor asset quality do not attract sufficient interest from viable bidders. In those instances, depositors are paid the full amount of their insured deposits. The FDIC as receiver then chooses an alternative strategy for handling these uh, failed bank assets, such as cash sales, securitizations, and structured transactions. Pattern after a successful program used by the former RTC, the FDIC initiated a structured transaction sales program in May of 2008. By using structured transactions, the FDIC avoids selling assets into distressed markets at prices below their intrinsic value and saves the costs associated with maintaining the infrastructure needed for long-term agency management of the assets. We estimate that we have saved approximately $4 billion by using structured transactions instead of cash sales. In structured transactions, the FDIC pools a group of similar assets from one or more failed bank receiverships and transfers them to a newly formed LLC. Through a competitive bidding process, the FDIC offers a portion of the equity in the LLC to pre-qualified private sector experts who have the experience managing the, the types of assets in the pool and who have the economic resources to bear the obligations and risks of the agreement. The highest bidder pays cash for its equity interest in the LLC and becomes the managing member with responsibility for the day-to-day -day management of the LLC and its assets. The percentage of book value that the bidder's valuation represents is for the entire pool of the assets and cannot be attributed to an individual asset. Since 2009, to ensure robust bidding, many of the transactions have included leverage in the form of, a purchase money, in the form of purchase money notes issued by an LLC to the failed bank receiverships as partial payment for the assets sold by the receiverships to the LLC. The purchase money notes represent debt owed by the LLC to the receiverships. In general, most transaction agreements require that these notes be repaid in full before there is any equity distribution to the members of the LLC. These notes do not finance the cash purchase price paid by the managing member for its equity interest in the LLC. The FDIC actively monitors these transactions through its staff and third-party contractors. On a regular basis, the FDIC and its contractors conduct on-site compliance reviews of each LLC's operations. Additionally, the managing member must comply with stringent monthly, semi-annual, and annual reporting requirements. The FDIC's Office of Inspector General has completed audits on two of the transactions the FDA with all of the OIG's recommendations and has implemented or is in the process of implementing these recommendations. <coughs> At my request, the OIG has begun audits of two LLCs managed by an affiliate of Rialto Capital Management. These reports are expected to be delivered late in the late third quarter of this year. We understand that a number of borrowers and guarantors have raised concerns about the managing members not achieving the resolution of their debts as the borrower or guarantor would desire. The FDIC investigates every borrower or guarantor inquiry and works with the managing member to address any of the concerns raised. We fully expect the managing members to pursue payoffs and loan modifications when these options would result in the highest return to the LLC. With respect to single family residences, the managing members and their servicers are obligated to follow a federally mandated loan modification program. Where, where a payoff modification or other loss mitigation is not feasible, the managing member is left with no other choice but to enforce the terms of the loan contracts through the courts and other legal means. 
To ensure it receives the highest return on the assets that the managing member treat fail, to, to, to ensure that it receives the highest return on the assets and that managing members treat failed bank borrowers fairly, FDIC monitors compliance with transaction agreements, measures actual performance against projections, conducts regular site visitations, and thoroughly investigates borrower complaints with regard to the servicing and disposition of their loan by the managing member. Thank you for the invitation to testify, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.